now look to Rory Sealand Jones to continue the case for the proposition. Thank you very much, uh, Madam President, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Can I first of all say what a huge honour it is to be here tonight. Uh, when I was an undergraduate, uh, I, and that was four decades ago, I dreamed of, uh, of speaking in the high temple of debating, um, of crossing swords with some of the finest minds of our generation. Well, that's not to be. I can't be at Cambridge tonight, but um, this is... <laughs> This is a, a, an excellent second best, and um, <laughs> Matt Warman uh, failed. Uh, well, no, he was a great tech journalist and um, fallen on hard times and has become an MP. Um, just with perfect timing, perfect timing. Um, he'll have to do, he'll have to do. Um, it says here, tip number one, always get the audience on your side at the start. <laughs> we'll have to do a bit better. Um, I'm going to start by... by helping the opposition, because they obviously need it, <laughs> um, by uh, giving us some of the positive sides of technology. I'm a technology correspondent, I love technology, and I've reveled in these great stories of the last 10, 15 years, which have seen our lives transformed by, and I'm going to zero in on four fantastic companies. Um, uh, in January 2007, I went to an event in uh, San Francisco, uh, at the Moscone Center. Uh, there's an event called Mac World. Uh, there's a lot of anticipation around it. A man in um, uh, jeans and a black polo neck sweater got on, got on stage and said he was going to change the world. They always say that, don't they? And there were loads of adoring fans, and there was an, a certain amount of hysteria, but that is tech events for you. And it was the birth of the iPhone, uh, which uh, has certainly changed all of our lives over the ensuing decade. And uh, I was doing a story for the 10 o'clock news. Uh, we had not much time to file it, and I was running uh, back to the hotel to feed the piece when I got a call from my office, who weren't usually excited about technology, saying, we've just seen the phone, we're really excited. You need to have the phone in your hand. This was impossible. I couldn't get the iPhone in my hand. How could I do that? And I then remembered that we'd been promised uh, an interview, not with Steve Jobs, but with his uh, marketing chief. And I'd said, uh, no, we don't want an in interview with the second best. And then we suddenly changed our minds. We raced back and we said, Mr. Schiller, before we interview you, can we just borrow that little phone? Um, stood there, did the piece to camera, holding the phone. Uh, and in uh, the following Sunday's Observer, I was described as looking like a man holding a piece of the true cross. Uh, <laughs> And I was excited, I was excited, and Apple is an extraordinary company and has done uh, um, amazing things. And in fact, uh, Matt will be filing any minute because Apple's results are due out in about two minutes' time. Uh, they're probably going to break records again, and they have done extraordinary things. A, a company with the gift of knowing what consumers want uh, before they know it themselves. Google, another company uh, that has changed our lives, gave us Android became an, a much bigger force in taking the mobile revolution that has changed all our lives global than Apple did. They've also got a tiny little search business, which some of you may have used. I don't know, you're, you look like an educated crowd. Um, and they have YouTube, an amazing TV resource, giving us all access to everything from funny cats to Oxford Union debates, God help us. Uh, I just had a search, by the way, uh, on YouTube, 1.3 million results for the Oxford Union. Uh, I, and I had a look at one of the, um, uh, one of the videos, and it said, this, there was something at the bottom saying, the speaker in this video is a competitive debater, and therefore the views expressed may not necessarily represent his or her beliefs. Well, I'm not at all, I'm not at all competitive. Um, and whatever I say here, I'm also a BBC correspondent, so I have no beliefs whatsoever. So, uh, <laughs> But I digress. Uh, perhaps the most significant part of Google right now is here in the UK. Uh, it's a company called DeepMind. It's the division which is leading the world in the development of artificial intelligence. So an, um, another amazing business doing extraordinary things uh, and advancing 
at uh, uh, a, a, a rapid pace and changing our lives. Uh, and then there's Amazon, uh, the extraordinary global logistics empire, uh, dedicated to giving you what you want within 24 hours and employing every single resource possible to do that, from robots to drones to, yes, tens of thousands of human beings to make that possible. An extraordinary company. Here's one of the weird things they brought out. To, they're absolutely focused uh, on their mission to get you stuff the minute you want it. This, anyone seen one of these? It's a dash button. How daft is this? If I press this button now, a packet of Ariel will be delivered within 24 hours to my house. Oh no, I pressed, no, oh God. <laughs> Ten, they brought out these things. They, they, you can get, get these for everything from coffee to detergent to, believe it or not, condoms. <laughs> One struggles to work out the circumstances in which you'd have this mounted next to your bed and press that button, but there we are. <laughs> that is the wonders of technology. Um, so, Apple, uh, Google, uh, Amazon, uh, and last but not least, in this sort of parade of these tech empires, Facebook. Started in his dorm room by Mark Zuckerberg in 2004 and growing in just 14 years to probably the world's most powerful media company. Though they'd hate me for saying that, they don't want to be a media company. Where would we be without a place to brag of our foreign holidays and engage in pointless arguments about Brexit? while sharing that meme that's been around the world three times before breakfast. God help us. Don't forget, Facebook also owns WhatsApp, invaluable for people like uh, Matt Warman for plotting coups again. No, not, not him. Um, uh, uh, invaluable resource for uh, uh, plotting in utmost secrecy, unless you wanted to leak it to the mail on Sunday, which uh, happens on a weekly basis. So, uh, Facebook, Amazon, Apple, Google, four amazing companies which constantly tell us uh, about their mission. One is thinking different. Another wants to do no evil. The other two want to give people the power to build community and bring the world close together uh, or to build the world's most customer-centric company. They're lovely. They're beautiful. What's not to like? Well, quite a lot, actually. First of all, they're all from one very small part of the world. Are we really comfortable that so many vital decisions are being made about our lives, uh, about the fabric of our lives, and about uh, how we're going to develop over the coming decades in one small area? San Francisco, Cupertino, Mountain View, uh, and then all the way up in Seattle. A uh, pretty small area of the world for such vital decisions to, to, to all be made. Then there's their impact on competition and innovation. Sure. They're the most brilliant companies on earth, employing many of the smartest people, but so much money is in their hands and in the venture capital houses around them in Silicon Valley that it's hard for anyone else to, to grow to a level where they might be challenged. Two little examples recently. Uh, I mentioned DeepMind, that fabulous uh, AI business based in London. That was started by a couple of um, Cambridge uh, <laughs> graduates. Um, a few good things come out of Cambridge, come on. Um, uh, and it was bought when it was hardly out of short trousers. Uh, and yeah, Google have done great things with it, but are we happy that such an important business should be so swiftly gobbled up uh, by one of the monsters of Silicon Valley? God, that was quick. She had twice as long as that. <laughs> um, to, uh, Facebook, Facebook just last uh, uh, October, bought a company that was just nine weeks old. Uh, an, an anonymous team network called TBH wanted to gobble it up before it had got anywhere. For all the talk that Google failed Yahoo and the same could happen uh, to, to them from another search engine or that Facebook, was, uh, Facebook crushed MySpace and a new network could come along, perhaps um, the new network started by Matt Hancock MP. I don't know if any of you have joined the Matt Hancock app today. That could be a threat to Facebook, wipe it off. No, I don't believe it. The sheer power, the sheer uh, amount of data, the eye-popping wealth, uh, the reach of these companies means they look pretty impregnable, at least in the West. So probably a job for competition regulators, but there's a more serious threat to society from these em em empires. And it's embedded 
in that kind of juvenile, hippy-dippy, Californian, I'm okay, you're okay, <laughs> self-belief they have, that conviction that they are the good guys. It just grates a little. Look at what they're doing to us. They've shared, uh, they've enabled trolls, terrorists, and monumental bores to get a global audience. Sorry, that's my time, you see. Um, uh, they've stolen our attention. Uh, we spend all our days looking at phones. Uh, young people spend roughly five hours a day on, on their phones. I got that factoid in a Google search, it must be true. Um, <laughs> they put their clever algorithms out there without much concern about what happens if they're biased or they're gamed. Uh, one example from a year or so back, uh, Google Home, the, the new speaker they've got, if you asked it, is Obama planning a coup, it would come back saying, yeah, Obama's planning a coup. He's in bed with the Chinese. It's going to happen um, because somebody had gamed it. Uh, and more broadly, the massive influence of these platforms makes them extremely dangerous. We've learned over the last year just how far both Google and Facebook can go in spreading fake news, in allowing attacks on vulnerable, pe vulnerable, vulnerable people, in actually trying to sway an election. Uh, it seemed far-fetched, but then we saw what happened uh, in, uh, in the United States in 2016. More than two-thirds of American adults, 67%, get at least some of their news on social media. Um, I'm, I'm, you're hurrying me now, aren't you? You're hurrying <laughs> me. I, I will hurry myself. I'm on my last page. It's okay. Uh, we saw what happened with the spread of misinformation, we, we've, we've, we, and it was laughed off by Mark Zuckerberg. He described the idea that fake news could have swung the presidential election as crazy. Well, in the last year, both Facebook and the other tech empires have had a nasty shock. Politicians and the wider public have actually turned against them, have begun asking those difficult questions that should have been asked many years ago. And ladies and gentlemen, those are the questions this side is asking tonight. Are we happy with the might of these tech empires? Are we convinced they're good for our society? And you know, we think we need the Oxford Union, this mighty, wondrous, influential, incredibly influential, greatest debating society in the world. I'm not going to mention the other place. Uh, we need you to take a stand tonight to take down these tech empires a peg or two. So, please walk through the right door. I'm not quite sure what it is, but I'll go and check later. Okay, <laughs> thank you very much.